Chapter 2. Conflict and Division. Inside a courtroom at a prestigious university on planet Albach, Princess Trinity and Jane Turner stood before their queen and judge, Vedic Jones. Queen Vedic Jones was the supreme judge of the land known as the Sarina Gemfields. She was ranked the best mystic in the known universe standing at six feet, six inches tall with dark skin and natural physical strength. Trinity, 16-year-old, her orange hair two feet long. She was known to wear elegant purple clothes. Jane Turner, 30 years old with freshly cut, short, spiky blonde hair and a rock-hard athletic body, was there too. Jane, a Gemini, had a split personality, one was a troublesome teenager, and the other was a fearless daredevil performing dangerous parkour stunts throughout Nankin City as her playground. She wore red velvet and black leather padded armor. Trinity, this is your very first quest to Earth and Nankin City. Are you nervous? Trinity nodded. Thinking of Barrister Arlo Sergio's lecture before I go to Earth, your honor. Never discuss my personal life, religion, politics, race, culture, magic, psionics, or money, as these subjects lead to more trouble than they're worth. My quest needs to remain private and confidential because Earth is ready for neither Albach nor Planet Siona. I mean, look at how divided Earthling humans are, now more than ever before, on simple issues. Please explain your point, Queen Vedic said. A man will leave a toilet seat up, arguing that men say, look before you sit. I will be surrounded by thousands who leave the toilet seat up, and unless I specifically ask the question of whether or not it is down, I will not know who offenders are even by using my telepathy. Trinity gasped hysterically. Queen Vedic rolled her eyes then smiled. Like our mystic leaders, your two grandfathers before us, suggest, be neither good nor evil, just remain neutral. Avoid discussion. Just remain neutral, is what your two grandfathers always said. How we all dearly miss your grandfather Hawken. Early this morning, our head of divine magic, Sir Leviticus Smith, witnessed an incident revealing someone in a cybernetic suit attacking the Golden Sun Country Club. Reports have called him the cyborg, and he possibly conspired with by Dr. Axel Chase, the crazy engineer who posts those viral videos. Other statements revealed the use of level 5 arcane magic, although with lack of evidence, it's hard to prosecute any of this in any court of law. Queen Vedic Jones passed the photos to an assistant, who handed them to the Trinity and Jane. More information is necessary regarding this quest. I will make one thing very clear, Whomever is responsible comes from somewhere in the Sarina gem fields and will face my full judgment. Queen Vedic leaned in closer to her microphone. You're both dealing with someone just as evil as Zonal Giovanni and Nigel Giovanni, with mixed sorcery and perhaps more powers. The cyborg has no regard for human life, especially seeing that innocent children nearly burned to death. Fortunately, Nankin emergency volunteers were present to help in the immediate aftermath of the tragedy. Princess Trinity and Jane Turner, this quest will be A-ranked, and reinforcements will only be provided with sufficient evidence. Jane Turner raised her hand, eager to ask a question. Permission granted to speak, Jane Turner. Jane stood to speak while carelessly chewing gum. So, Ms. Vedic, what's the bounty to collect? And I need to be able to report to my superior, Cameron Banks, the warden of Rubervale Prison, and to my father, Maxwell. Jane blew a pink bubble until it popped. Queen Vedic frowned while closing her eyes, trying to ignore Jane's childish behavior. One million gold. Remember to remain safe and find sufficient evidence. You do not need to act alone when in any danger. Jane blew another big bubble purposely observing the Queen's reaction. Your Honour, as Princess, I will remain safe throughout the investigation, assisting Jane Turner as she leads our quest. Queen Vedic smiled at Trinity's dedicated vow until Jane interrupted childishly. Trinity, you will love Earth after what I have planned for you, doing parkour stunts using many public landmarks, riding a motorbike, and shooting a wide range of firearms, only at the range, of course. Jane excitedly explained while chewing gum. 
She blew a much larger bubble until it popped, getting stuck all over her nose, and has stuck out her long tongue and licked the gum back into her mouth, leaving a small, sticky trail. Queen Vedic slammed her open palm on the table. Damn it, Jane, will you take this a little more seriously? Jane crossed her eyes slowly while tilting her head. All right, chief. We will save the disco after our quest and once Embrace Diversity Week is over. Queen Vedic closed her eyes, sighing heavily. Remember you are both given the opportunity to represent Rubervale Prison and Amethyst University. Jane Turner, is it true that you have a combined weapons demonstration with a boy from Emerald for Embrace Diversity Week? This will be the first time someone from Emerald has come to join us for our annual event. Yes, it's true. This kid has skills he learned from his awesome daddy's manuscript. Once you see the weapons master fighting, even you, m, will confess. Oh my god, this teenager redefines the term critical hit, Jane replied, clicking her fingers while moving her hand in a circular motion. Gwenvale, a neighboring suburb six miles west of Nankin City, surrounded by wide mountains and beautiful forest, spread out far since the global financial crisis development did not affect it. The town was known for its well-functioning public hospital, asylum, prison, and high school. Dr. Tracy Genelan, a calm, heartwarming woman dedicated to helping her local community as a volunteer psychiatrist, paramedic, and teacher of troubled teens, wore the same outfit every day, inspiring her students assisting NEV with minor labor problems. The outfit consisted of white skin-tight clothes with a hard plastic breastplate designed for Taekwondo competition. The American Red Cross logo was on the back of her top and the NEV logo was across her chest. She kept her blonde hair tied into a ponytail. Eyeglasses with red-colored frames added comfort to her warm smile. Inside the teacher's lounge before school started, Principal Childus made Dr. Genelan a coffee. Thank you for the coffee. Principal Childus. I have confidence that your facial expressions are indicating a need to share good news. It just so happens I have a date with a lady friend I have known for six years. We are about to have our first date, and I have a wish list to follow. Dr. Genelan grimaced. Where did this wish list come from? And what about just getting a coffee together and talking? Principal Childus laughed. She deserves so much more for a first date. That's why we are eating at the Golden Sun Country Club restaurant north of Nankin City's central business district. As for gifts, I bought an expansive diamond necklace, 24 red roses, and a new violin, not forgetting the teddy bear. Not responding immediately, Dr. Genelan waited to hear him reveal more information. One good tip she gave me is to never talk about politics and religion. At a staff meeting before you came here, the guidance counselor had 12 people sit at a table, a jury of our peers. We talked about the holistic needs of students. Each person had to pull out a card from each of the six hats and research the topics of religion, politics, race, culture, sexual orientation, and palliative care. Palliative care seems to be redundant, seeing as this is a school, not a facility preparing students for the end of their lives. We hope. Principal Childus anxiously wiped the sweat from his forehead. It didn't take long for an argument about religion to erupt, although the point of the exercise is to focus on the needs of the children, not to push our own views. For dating and discussion, religion is the cause of every verbal war. And most debates move into the area of conflict by talking about the number one problem, religion. Read the religious influences in the story of Job. For example, the man saw his ten kids killed, lost his livestock and wealth, and had his body covered in boils, but he wouldn't curse God for what Satan had clearly done. After all of that, he was still totally loyal to a deity and chose to live with his torturous pain. I would personally demand an explanation if my life turned to crap. You would be surprised to learn just how many subjects can be difficult to talk about, tearing apart a friendship, relationship, or conversation. So, you know, there are many difficult topics that are considered controversial other than just politics and religion. Take a moment to realize other subtopics that will hit close to your heart. 
Speaking of religion, do not forget to talk about specific topics, seeing as not all denominations are the same and that not people are not divided 50-50 on all topics, Dr. Jenalan stated, smiling lovingly toward Principal Childus. She continued to speak before Principal Childus could say anything. Regarding politics, an opposition is necessary to challenge the other party to make continual improvements. The problem there is figuring out how to have a civil discussion and set a positive example. This school has its fair share of political drama, challenged by students, teachers, staff, volunteers, parents, guardians, the union, and your best friend, Superintendent Maggie. Dr. Jenalan smirked after mentioning Superintendent Maggie, implying sarcasm. I could take advice from a 36-year-old single woman who never shares her personal life or her lack of experience with a husband. Are you planning on settling down to have a family of your own or to provide grandchildren for your father at least? Principal Childus laughed mockingly while sweating repulsively. What about first dates? Do you have any suggestions? I am having my first date with Superintendent Maggie. I realized the sarcasm when you said, best friend. Dr. Jenalan shook her head and opened her eyes wider, shocked to hear who it was he was taking on a date. I rarely imply sarcasm. You know I am serious and supportive to help you work out whatever it is you want. My top four suggestions are to drink nothing more than a coffee or two, not to exchange gifts, because that introduces too much pressure, creating an IOU situation, to go somewhere simple like a park to talk about everything, I mean to find out if you're compatible, the restaurant scene makes it difficult to talk with a mouthful of food, and to remain calm while talking to work out things for yourself. Only you know how you feel when talking. Principal Childers frowned. You mentioned discussing difficult subjects. What are some of them, and what should I talk about? Handing Principal Childers a pamphlet, she said, Well, you're a Democrat, so see if there is a common interest. Talk about your interests and ask her what her interests are. Communication is the key. Couples cannot work anything out if they lack communication. I have witnessed many relationships where a partner did not even realize they were involved with someone still married, all because one or both of them did not talk. The most common toxic relationships today involve a narcissist and an empath. As for a wish list, a relationship is doomed if it begins that one-sided. Probably you are the empath and she is the narcissist. Looking at her silver and topaz-studded watch, Dr. Jenalan said, Oh, my class is waiting for me. If you need to talk, or if you want my suggestion of someone else to talk with, I am happy to help. Oh, and one final point Principal Childus. You deserve so much more, and even if you never get married, it's not doomsday. So please, please, refrain from pointing out my marital status, keeping our workplace professional. Are we clear? Crystal clear, doctor. Dr. Jenalan left, ready to teach her class. Inside the teacher's lounge, Principal Childers lay back, the sofa comfortably absorbing him, and began reading all the bullet points in the pamphlet he'd received. List of subjects every couple should talk about at least once in the early stages of a relationship. Many successful marriages are formed by early discussion on these subjects and more. Divorce rates continue to rise higher because of three primary issues, codependency, lack of communication, and lack of understanding. Custody, parenting, religion, politics, gun control, race relations, abortion, stem cell research, the death penalty, drug legalization, immunization, LGBT issues, immigration, euthanasia, extended breastfeeding, police brutality, the afterlife and finances.